Hey y'all, this is Appalachian Gunman here. I got y'all a video to do here today. We're gonna to be talking about the Orient Mako USA 2. This is the box that comes in. It's a, uh, I mean, I've had mine probably for two years, I guess. It may come in a different box now, but this is like kind of like fake leather, I guess. It's kind of, it's a hard shell box. It's got brushed aluminum top on it. And I can wait to show you all the watch there. It comes on that little pillar inside of it. And I guess I could show you what comes inside the box. It's uh, nothing too special. Uh, just a regular your typical owner's manual. You know, it's got it for several different languages for different uh, watches that Orient sells. These are just some spare spring bars that I ordered from Islander Watch. They're not, uh, they didn't come with it. And these are two spare links that uh, I had to take out when I sized the watch. Then in there in the bottom, you've got your warranty information. It comes with it. So we'll just set that box aside now and get to talking about the actual watch. Zoom in on here, we all can see it better. And you see, it's got the when I turn it towards the light, there you can see that kind of blue sunburst style dial that it's got. It's all stainless steel construction, bracelet in the case, case back, bezel, everything is stainless except the bezel insert is aluminum, it's anodized blue to match the dial. And, uh, I've got my knife here that's got the centimeters on it, millimeters, so we'll do a few little measurements of the watch here. Let's see. I mean, you can look on the Orient website pretty much to find all these measurements, but uh, so right there you're getting about maybe about 12 millimeters thick. 12 or 13. I think they listed as 12 or 13. And, uh, I wish I had a caliper. It'd be a lot easier. But, uh, there's the lug. The lug is, uh, about, what, 44? 44 millimeters. That's a pretty short lug the lug which is a good thing for most people because i mean even though this is a 41 and a half millimeter diameter case not counting the crown of course uh, that's a pretty you know pretty short lug the lug length and of course we have the lug width i don't have to measure that we can measure it anyway but uh it's a 22 millimeter lug width, but it looks supposed to be, yep, there you got 22. So if you wanna buy a strap for it or a different kind of bracelet or something, then you're gonna to wanna to get 22 millimeter. It does have a 120 click rotating bezel. I'll talk about the cons of this watch with y'all in a minute. I'm just gonna kinda of go over the features and the things I like about it and uh, has a signed Orient logo crown it's laser engraved in there you can't really tell because it's scratched up so much but the sides of the case are actually polished and the tops of the case and the lugs are actually brushed it's like the front of the bracelet and the back side of the bracelet is brushed and the sides of the bracelet are polished. And it does have a, in the way of complications, it's got day, date, and then of course hours, minutes, and seconds. And you can see all the indices are applied. I think the logo was applied and then the Orient Automatic and then the water resist and then 200 meters. And then this little tiny right there at the bottom, it's all printed on the dial. But, uh, 
It's got a screw in crown. So I'm gonna screw the crown out. See if y'all can hear it winding. It does have hand winding capability. And, and it, it's hackable. And that you can stop the second hand. So when I go to set it, and I want to line it up perfectly with the minute marker, see it's perfect alignment of 25 minutes, and it's right on the 12. And you can stop it right on the 12. But I'm not going to set the time though because the time's already right on it. Put your crown all the way back in. Here's a little thing that's kind of annoying with this. Y'all may notice this. I don't know. Watch when I push the crown back in. I don't know if y'all can see it, but that dial actually moves a little bit. And I think that's just a result of the whole movement moving inside and then the dial just moves with it. But, you know, I mean, at the price point that this has, I ain't really going to throw off on it that bad for that. And, uh, it's got a uh, sapphire crystal, which I believe it's uh, anti-reflective coating too. It's in a smudge. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I can't stand a, stand a smudge on the crystal. We'll go ahead and screw that back in there. The bracelet has a uh, push pins in the links. I think I mentioned that earlier. So you can size it. I got about a seven and a quarter inch wrist, seven inch, somewhere around there. And uh, yeah, it's still got plenty of adjustment to go smaller and two more lengths to go bigger, which I like to wear mine just, just a little bit loose, a little bit of slack. I'm gonna take my watch off of wearing now, just wear no cheap Timex digital watch. Show y'all what the this looks like on my wrist. And here's the clasp. It's uh, orient. It's marked. It's got the double push buttons on each side. And you just push it and it snaps in there. And it's got the little security clasp over it. And right there's what it looks like on my wrist. I normally wear it kind of back behind the wrist bone like that. But, you know, of course it it slides back and forth anyway so a lot of times when walking my arms are hanging down the side it's actually down below the wrist bone but then when i'm just sitting around i usually keep it about right there and that's what it looks like on my wrist and now i'm going to show y'all what give y'all a little i'll give you a better look at the case back because uh as you can see, my nose will go. It does have drill lug hose, which this watch is, uh, I only got one extra strap for it. It's this one right here, it's NATO. And I think it color goes with it pretty good, the black with the gray stripes, but uh, it, it would be a good watch too to have like, say a rubber strap, some kind of silicone diver strap or something. Would well, all be pretty nice on it, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put that uh, NATO on here, and we'll take this uh, metal bracelet off. I don't have a strap tool, so I use these little tweezers that came with the phone screen repair kit, and uh, that's what I use to change my straps out with all the time. Because it does come to a really small little point as you can see and just stick it down that hole on each side your end link will come off because it's a female type end link <clears throat> it's the same thing for the other side Give it a little push there. Then a little push on that side. 
And we got that one out. And I just put these end links in that bracelet over in my case. And here's what the watch looks like with my bracelet. And it's smudged up again. If it's smudged up bad on that towel because that towel's got a lot of oil and stuff on it from gun cleaning and things like that. You can see there, uh, it's got stainless steel, what is this, 20 bar, Epson, because it's made by Seiko Epson. And you can see it's a screw on case back. And it's got this little right in there here, I think, which is the movement. Can't get the light right to really where you can see that good, but it says AA02CB-B. And it's got that number, I don't know if that's a serial number or what. And then it's got these uh, dolphins swimming in a circle engraved in there. And then, of course, right here is something you don't really see on hardly any watches around this price. Is uh, right there. Made in Japan. There it is, folks. Made in Japan. They don't just say Japan movement. It actually says made in Japan. That's something you just don't see that very often. put these spring bars back in here I just put one end in and then use these little tweezers to grab the flanges on the other end push them in there and now they're in there now we'll just put our NATO on there if you ain't there Use the NATO, it's pretty easy. Just start from the top. Put your spring bars in first. Most watches you put the strap on there and put the spring bar through the strap. And then try to put the spring bar into the case while it's on the strap. This you just put your spring bars on the case and then you just run your strap through like that. And you got that metal loop down there. And then you just run this end of the strap through like that and then you got it on your NATO pretty nice little touch and then this NATO has a lot of room for adjustment I think the reason for that though is not for people it's not for like people with nine inch wrist <laughs> if there even is such a thing if anybody with a wrist that big but it's mainly I think for like wearing it over a cuff of a coat or something like that now some of the cons of this watch there's about two or three little minor cons one is that movement i showed y'all earlier where it, where it moves side to side when you push and pull the crown another is that the crown don't have very good grip on it so like unscrewing it screwing it back and winding things like that are kind of aggravating to do and the, the bezel don't grip very good so it's Kind of hard to turn the bezel. Now, I ain't gonna say nothing about the aluminum bezel insert and being anodized and the paint scratching on it stuff. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little over a $300 watch. But uh, I'll try to put a put a link in this uh, video in the description for y'all to actually go to Orient's website, check this out. And, uh, and before we go, I like to show you go ahead and turn the lights off here. Then we can do I'll show y'all a limb shot. I had up the light earlier, but it's probably been 20 minutes since I've done that. And we'll turn it off here. And there's the loom. And the loom in this holds up pretty good. I mean you can see the secret's hand moving right there. And uh all the looms lit up good and it, it holds it pretty good too. I, there's sometimes I'll wear it like all day, but then it'll sit in the box all night and I can get it out of the box even when it's dark and it's not this bright, but it's still legible. So the Luminous is pretty good. Uh, I have a Hamilton. I can't say the same about the Hamilton. The Loom, uh, the Hamilton is a pretty nice watch, but. I'll admit the loom on the Hamilton is pretty sorry compared to this, but uh, 
there you have it guys uh, got all your indexes around here you see how they are kind of the diver shape you got the little border around the day and the date which is something i like real good but you don't always see on ever watch but uh that's pretty much the extent of this watch and uh, for the price i don't know if i mentioned i mean it does have a sapphire crystal it's that's a pretty big deal to a lot of people including me and i think it might have an ar coating on it i'm not 100 percent sure on that you had to check the website to be sure but uh you know really nice setup here uh i i would highly recommend this watch i've had it for about two years I've worn it quite a bit you can tell from how scuffed up the middle on the case is and the bracelet that uh, i wear it quite a bit and uh I'd highly recommend it. So, I mean, for the money that you pay, you're getting quite a bit with this watch. But uh, I thank y'all for watching, y'all. And uh, next time, come check me out again. God bless y'all.